Hey y'all! So today I am doing a book review on Elantris. It is the first book that I had ever read by Brandon Sanderson and unfortunately I don't have the physical copy with me but um, I let a friend borrow it because um, I really wanted him to read it so I just gave it to him without even thinking about needing it for this review so I'm sorry but I'll put a, a picture up for you but um, I'm just really excited to talk about it because I feel it was a great book and I feel like it started like this whole new journey that I'm going to be going on um, with more of Brandon Sanderson's novels. I enjoyed it so much but of course um, the way I handle is I'll do non-spoilers at first and then we'll get into spoilers and I'll put up timestamps for you that way you can skip to the end um, past the spoilers if you haven't read it yet or if you don't want spoilers and um, or you can watch it all the way through if you've already read it. So I, the thing about Brandon Sanderson, they've said that Elantris, and I'll say they, it's just random people that, you know, different reviews I've read, different people I've talked to in book groups. Um, most people say that Elantris is his worst book, but that it's still a good book. And I would, um, I guess I would agree with that. I don't want to say that. I don't, I don't know if it's his worst book, um, just because I've only at this point read two of them. Um, I did like the second one that I read, uh, Final Empire. I did like it a little bit more than Elantris, but Elantris was his first novel that he wrote, and so naturally he would get better as he goes. So that's not surprising, but the book, even for it to be his worst, if it really is his worst, was amazing. Um, so I, as soon as I finished it, I was so excited to get into more books of his because, like I said, if that was his worst book, then I couldn't wait to read more of him. So um, one thing that I will note about him, and I even noticed this in The Final Empire, is Brandon Sanderson likes the word maladroit. I wanted to make sure I <laughs> said that right because I've never actually heard that word out loud and I could even be saying it wrong, um, but maladroit, he, um, which means clumsy, and he uses it at least four times in The Final Empire. I think he used it two or three in Elantris. Um, and I just find it funny because I've never seen that word before. I read Brandon Sanderson and he tends to use it several times. Um, so I, I just think it's funny that it seems like one of his favorite words. Um, one thing that he did in Elantris that I really enjoyed is he has multiple points of view, which is normal for fantasy. And um, there was, you know, I, at, at some points you're kind of like, oh, I don't really care about this particular character right now, you know, but then once you start reading that chapter of that character that you kind of don't care about, then you get back into really wanting to know more about what that character's doing. Um, and so when you finish that chapter, then you don't want, even want to go back to that first character. So you're just interested in everything that you're reading at that moment. At least that's how it was for me. Um, so it was really fun and toward the end when things start really coming together and him really bringing things um, into play and putting the pieces all in one place, um, bringing them together, it, it just moved so fast. Um, the quick point of view changes were amazing. It really built that tension for me. Um, I, I, I know of, I think someone else that I was talking to said they don't like that, um, but for me it really worked. It really did. It just built that tension up and it um, just it made everything seem to happen so much faster and because of what was happening it was good that it felt like things were happening fast because they were happening fast in the book so I really really enjoyed it um, the the only thing that was a little disappointing for me is because I know that because um, technically Elantris you don't have to read that one first but how I I can't remember who I was watching. Um, they kind of gave like a, um, a suggestion on what order to read his books in. And they suggested that if you weren't sure if you wanted to get into like an 11 book um, Cosmere epic fantasy that this is to kind of dip your toes in with Elantris. Um, because it's not his best book, because it's a standalone, that was the main thing is it's a standalone. Um, and I think that was really good for me, so that I start, that's why I started with that one. But because I liked it so much, I was kind of sad to know that um, these characters probably weren't going to be in future books, or if they were, they, they weren't going to be main characters. I really did like these characters. 
Um, so that was kind of disappointing for me, but I also completely understand, you know, this, but it was a good, I think it was a good introduction for me personally. Um, I'm glad that I started with that one. Um, so, and, and I'll get more into the final empire when I do that review, but I, I'm really glad that I picked this series up. So everybody that hypes Brandon Sanderson, I agree. I'm on the hype train. I think everybody should read it, especially if you like um, fantasy. It's, it's really good. I love the magic system. Um, it seems it, it's a hard magic system, which this is uh, my first, um, kind of my first foray into a hard magic system. I think most other novels that I've read that have magic are soft. Um, which soft for me, it gives the author a lot of wiggle room. It gives a lot of plot kind of where like if a that way a writer doesn't write themselves into a corner basically to where they have to pull out some magic hat, um, to make something happen or to make the main character live and be the hero. Um, so it, sometimes soft magic systems, um, give that wiggle room. However, authors that write hard magic systems and do it this well, I mean, it's very great. Um, it shows some foresight from the author. It shows planning, um, and I really enjoy it. The hard magic system was great. I because there were no surprises. It was it's hard, you know, and it's limited. It's not, um, you know, there's not like in Harry Potter. Now I love Harry Potter, but one thing that's always that always can be argued, no matter what the situation was is, well, why didn't this character use this spell instead of the spell that they did? And so I understand that the um, you know, author J.K. Rowling at the time, she's using this character to choose this particular spell because she wants a particular outcome. But that's also kind of the problem with magic systems that don't have a limit is that they you're always gonna say, well, why didn't they just you know stun this character? Why didn't they just, you know, summon this item to them. It would have saved so much time. So sometimes, and, and for Harry Potter, I just, especially because I read it when I was so young, I absolutely love Harry Potter now. So I just enjoy the story as it's, as she's wanting to tell it to me. You know, I'm not gonna nitpick on different things, even though, because we all know Harry Potter has its issues, it has its flaws, and that's one of them. So I just try to enjoy it for the story and not really deep dive into it. But something like this, magic systems like this um, that Brandon Sanderson has, you have limits and that's, you know, if, if you want to, if you want to really restrict your main character, if you want, or any of the characters, and you want a certain thing to happen, then you have them reach that limit. Um, and so I think it, it, it makes it feel more realistic is a weird word to, um, to use when you're talking about fantasy magic, but it does make it more realistic because there's limits to things. So I, I really enjoy the magic system. Um, it's a metal magic system. I don't know. Uh, I don't want to go into too many details cause I think you enjoy just reading it. So I won't go into too many details about how the magic system works but it's great and definitely give it a shot. Um, I want to kind of talk more about the characters in Elantra, so I'm going to move on into spoilers a little bit. Um, the, the three characters, uh, Rowden, Serene, and what else? Rothen. Rothen? I don't know, I'm not sure. I know um, I physically read the book. My husband is going to listen to it on audio, and I already heard the narrator say Serene as Serene. Um, so I, I don't know if it's supposed to be Serene. I prefer Serene. I think it's prettier. And that's how I read it, <laughs> read the entire book is with her being Serene in my head. So I'm going to say Serene. Sorry. Um, but Serene is kind of pretty though. Anyway, um, those are the three main characters. And I really liked Rowden. Um, he seems to be one of those, um, really good at every, I don't want to say good at everything, but he's a really well liked character, but he does have his flaws. Um, he has his doubts, his insecurities, and I really enjoyed that, especially given his situation that he was put in. You know, it seems so dire um, and hopeless. So I really enjoyed that. Um, and Serene, I, I really enjoyed her as well. Um, she seems really strong. Sometimes her humor was a little weird. Um, 
almost like she was trying too hard, but when you really read into it and you really think about her character and things that she says, in this case, I do feel like she is kind of trying too hard because she just came to this new kingdom. She knows nobody. Her, you know, would-be husband or husband in this case um, is dead and gone and she doesn't have him to hold on to and help show her how this new realm is. Um, and so I feel like sometimes that is from her trying too hard and that makes sense because she really is. Um, and that can be forgiven. That's understandable and reasonable. And she's really a good person. Um, some of her parts in the book I did kind of get bored with, um, like with the fencing. I don't know, some of those points it just seemed a bit too drawn out. Um, but I understand that that was necessary for what happens later on in the story, but it just, a couple chapters I was really bored with it because I felt like Rowden was making some headway on his side, so I wanted to go back and uh, find out what Rowden's doing. Rothen. I've never been so conflicted about a character because I hated Rothen when we first started. I, um, I really did. I just hated him. He, I have a hard time with a lot of really overly religious characters um, and people in general, just especially when they have those, they would do anything to please their God or, you know, convert people, you know, especially when they're willing to use violence. Um, I, I don't approve of that. And so I really just hated his character. Um, I mean, faith is not something that I am against. I think faith can be really good. And I did admire that Rothen was always faithful. He never lost faith, even when he doubted some of the actions he was doing. Like, because at first he didn't doubt it, but at the end he was starting to doubt it. And I did like that even though he was doubting it, he still had his faith. Um, and I think that was a really good characteristic of him and really admirable to not lose his faith just because he has doubts. Because um, I feel like doubts are normal. Now, one thing that he did that I can't forgive him for, <laughs> even at the end of the story, I cannot forgive him for locking that poor Sion in the box and not even letting it talk. I, that broke my heart because they're supposed to be like sentient beings and he's just locking it in a box and doesn't let it talk. It's just so sad. I don't know, that was, that seemed, and I mean, I guess it feels weird to have more feelings for a Sion than for all the other people that he was willing to kill. Um, but I, I was, I witnessed the Sion and what he did to it. So um, that's where I fell. I just, it just, it was sad. I didn't like it at all. Um, but yeah, overall, um, I guess we're kind of done with the spoilers. Um, the ending was so great. Uh, when everything kind of comes together. I really enjoy him fix, I guess we're not done with spoilers. I really enjoyed Rowden um, fixing the magic system and bringing everything back to light as it were. Um, I, I, I think that it was really awesome. It was a really cool and clever way to have that magic. Um, it's unique. I mean, I, to be fair, I haven't read a whole lot of fantasy. This is really my first deep dive into an epic fantasy. Um, but I really, I really liked it. It was well done and I was super excited to start The Final Empire when I finally finished it. I think it's now. I'm sorry. Um, but yes, uh, I guess we are done with spoilers now. Um, so all in all, five stars for me. Definitely going to be continuing on with the series and I'll put up some more reviews when I get there. Um, so I've got a few other uh, videos up on the channel. I've got my channel intro where it talks about my TBR and I do have two reviews for The Chestnut Man and A Little Life already up and then next week um, should be The 13th Tale. I'm so excited to talk about that one. Um, one of my top favorite books, absolutely The 13th Tale by Diane Setterfield. So um, let me know in the comments if you've read Elantris or if that was the first book that you started Brandon Sanderson with because um, I would love to know if, if you started with a different book and then went back to Elantris and how you felt about reading that maybe after the Mistborn trilogy or in a different order. I want to know kind of how you feel about it and uh, if you think it is his worst book. 
I want to know because um, I'm hoping that it is his worst book because I liked it so much that, that means the rest of his books are going to be amazing. So um, yeah, just leave me a comment and a like, subscribe if you can, and I'll talk to you soon. Y'all take care.